As deep concrete includes the design of shear walls based on the latest ACI 318 provisions, this module generates the actual unbending interaction diagram and also verifies the design and detailing of the boundary members in full compliance with the ACI code. But how do you actually enter the information in the program? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and the following is a step-by-step -step shear wall design example using as deep concrete. Let's get started. Per the statement of the problem, design a first story reinforcement for a 23 feet 6 inches long shear wall in a 152 feet high 16 story residential building. The building columns at the ends of the wall are 36 by 36 inches. The structure is in a seismic design category D based on SDS of 0.92. USF prime C, 7500 PSI, and FY80 KSI. The loads are the following. Dead actual load, 2500 kips, live, 1000 kips. Also in seismic, moment, 25,000 kip feet, and the shear is 800 kips. So the goal is to completely design this shear wall according to the ACI code. Let's get started. This is the template of a shear wall design in as deep concrete. In the geometry tab, the wall web tab, you enter the geometric information given in the statement of the problem. The wall length is 23.5 feet. The wall thickness for now we will assume that is 24 inches. Then we will assume some reinforcement for now and we can change it later. Number 7 at 9 and number 7 at 9 vertical and horizontal. Also we know that the total height of the, of the wall is 152 fit. This is also given in the statement of the problem. The unsupported height is 9.5 feet and the number of stories is 16. If we click on the boundary members, here we enter the geometric information for these elements at the ends of the wall. From the statement of the problem, the boundary members are the columns of the building, 36 by 36 inches, and we want to reinforce the boundary members with number 11 rebars but we can change later all this reinforcement as we progress in the design. If we go to the materials tab, here we enter all the material properties, concrete, F'C, 7.5 KSI, and steel, FY, 80 KSI. If we go to the loads tab, here we enter all the loads given in the statement of the problem. We know that the dead load, vertical load axial is 2,500 kips, Live load is 1,000 kips, and finally in seismic is 75,000 kip feet moment, and the shear is 800 kip. Also, since this is a seismic zone, we click on the show parameters, and here we are specifying the SDS, which is also given in the statement of the problem, 0.92, and also the redundancy factor rho, 1.30. With the loads information, the program calculates the load combinations according to the ASE 7 10, 16. This includes also the seismic provisions. At the right, if we click on diagrams, this is the interaction diagram generated by the program according to the information just given. This is the nominal uh, interaction diagram with phi equal to 1. This is the design interaction diagram with the fee calculated according to the zone of the loads. The points represent the actual loads factor according to the load combinations. And we can see here that all the loads are inside the usable area of the design interaction diagram. Numerically, we go to the detail tab at the top. Here the program calculates the wall properties. Here the program calculates the maximum factor shear, BU, 1040 kips per this load combination, which includes seismic. Also the program checks the minimum reinforcement area in the web, 8.0025 horizontal and vertical. Scroll down. Here the program checks the flexural capacity per the controlling uh, load combination, which is this one. The maximum actual load is 1,790, and the moment is 97,500. When the program compares these maximum values with the capacity, the ratio is 0.90. Here the program calculates the shear strength. The maximum factor 
shear is 1040 kips per this load combination. However, the program calculates the design shear value as 3120 kips. It's almost three times the value BU. The design shear force is affected by a bending over strength ratio and a dynamic factor. It's important to limit the bending over strength since this will affect the required shear capacity in the same proportion. This is to ensure that a brittle shear failure will not occur. In addition to the actual bending and shear design capacity check in the shear wall, the boundary members must comply with a series of detailing provisions. For example, the maximum horizontal and vertical spacing of the rebars, also the hoop length and width, and also the transverse area in the boundary members. In this example, the bending over stress is the distance from this load to the nominal uh, interaction diagram, assuming Fy multiplied by 125. This overstrain ratio is considered in the calculations to find the design shear value. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a detailed set of calculations, but uh, grouped by topic, but also by load combination. Here is the interaction diagram generation with the most important points. This is the wall strength section per load combination that compares the applied axial and moment versus the capacity phi mn and phi pn. This is the shear strength calculation, the dynamic factor, and also the bending over strength factor that all those contribute to the calculation of the design shear force. And finally, the boundary member design, which checks multiple provisions in the ACI code. As you can see, it's very easy to design a shear wall using as deep concrete we were able to complete and optimize the design in just a few minutes that otherwise could take hours if you try to do it by hand. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.